Chemistry lecture number 33, ionization energy, electron affinity, and electronegativity. The energy required to remove an electron from an atom in the gaseous state is the ionization energy. Atoms with small radii have larger ionization energies. A small radius indicates that the electrons are being held tightly. Uh, it takes more energy to remove an electron if it's held tightly. Since the periodic chart can be used to predict trends in atomic radius, it can also be used to predict trends in ionization energy. Atomic radius is inversely related to ionization energy. And thus, if you go up a column on the periodic chart, ionization energy increases since the radius decreases. Ionization energy also increases as you go from left to right. Okay, so here's sort of a mock-up of a periodic chart. As you go from left to right, radius decreases, but ionization energy increases. Likewise, if you go up the chart, uh, the radius decreases, but as radius decreases, ionization energy increases. Remember, short or small radius means the electrons are held tightly, so small radius means they're held tightly, and it's going to take a lot of energy to rip those electrons off. So here are some ionization energies of the uh, period two elements. And the period two elements are in the second um, horizontal column on the periodic chart. All right, so <clears throat> here are the ionization energies of the period two elements in uh, kilojoules per mole. Now, below is a chart uh, showing how the energy gradually increases as you go from left to right. So notice the general trend of increasing energy as you go from left to right uh, across the uh, periodic chart. But you should also notice that the energy occasionally decreases as we move from left to right. So take a look. Increases and then suddenly it decreases and then increases, increases and then suddenly it decreases and then increases and increases. Um, so why does it do that? Well. Let's look at a few examples. So let's look at the ionization energy of beryllium, and we would expect it to have a uh, value uh, between that of lithium and boron. So lithium has an ionization energy of 520, boron has an ionization energy of 800. We would expect the ionization energy of beryllium should be somewhere between 500 and 800. Instead, it's 900. That's not between 520 and 800. So this ionization energy is elevated. All right. Now, why is the uh, ionization energy of beryllium elevated? Well, it's because beryllium has a full S sublevel. So, <clears throat> there's the electron configuration of beryllium, and notice that the S sublevel is filled. And remember that a full S sublevel stabilizes or makes the atom less reactive. And thus beryllium and all the other elements in group 2 will have an elevated ionization energy. So all these elements right here in group 2, they're going to have a slightly elevated ionization energy. It's going to be a little bit larger than uh, you would expect. Now, <clears throat> take a look at nitrogen. Nitrogen should have an ionization energy between that of carbon and oxygen. Uh, between 1090 and 1310, and instead it has an energy of 1400. So 1400 is not a number that you find between 1090 and 1310. Um, so why does it do that? Well, nitrogen has an elevated ionization energy since it has a half-filled P sublevel. So, let's do that. So. There's the electron configuration of nitrogen, and notice right here, these sublevels here are half filled. So when it has a half filled sublevel, uh, that confers a certain, uh, certain uh, stability to it. All right. So having a half filled uh, P sublevel uh, stabilizes uh, the atom. Uh, thus, nitrogen and all the elements in group 5A will have an elevated ionization energy. So, nitrogen has a half-filled P sublevel, and so do all these elements uh, right here uh, in group uh, 5. So, these are going to be slightly elevated ionization energy since they all have half-filled P sublevels. <clears throat> so,
So right here is a graph showing the ionization energies of the first 20 elements. <coughs> and right here, as you're going up here, you're going from left to right across the chart. So lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, you're going from left to right across the periodic chart. And notice that, uh, as predicted, in general, the ionization energy increases, and it increases uh, all the way up until it reaches peaks at you know helium, neon, argon, and then they drop again. So why does the ionization energy reach peaks when it hits these particular elements? Well, it reaches peaks at uh, helium, neon, and argon because these are group 8A elements. Group 8A elements have the highest form of stability since all but helium have an octet or eight outer electrons. Argon, for example, has eight electrons in its third energy level. So, there's the electron configuration of argon. And if you look right here in the third energy level, you have eight electrons. So, that stabilizes the atom. So, all the elements in group eight right here are extra stable. With the exception of helium, they all have an octet, and an octet is the highest form of stability. Now, atoms are reluctant to give up an electron if they have an octet, and uh, thus having an octet will elevate the ionization energy. So the energy required to remove the first electron from a neutral atom is the first ionization energy, and the energy required to move a second electron is the second ionization energy. Removal of the third electron is the third ionization energy, and so on. Ionization energy increases with the removal of each electron. Um, each time an electron is removed, the charge of the atom becomes more positive, causing the remaining electrons to be held more tightly and making the radius smaller. So here are some ionization energies for aluminum, and it shows how much energy it takes to remove uh, the electron. So to remove the first electron from aluminum, it takes 578 kilojoules per mole. Kilojoules per mole, that's just the amount of energy per certain amount of uh, atoms. But anyway, that's how much energy it takes to remove the first electron from aluminum. After the first electron is removed, it takes 1810 kilojoules of energy to remove the second electron. And then after the second electron is removed, it takes 2750. So joules of energy, so each time you remove an electron, it gets harder and harder to remove the subsequent electrons. Now, as expected, the energies increase each time an electron is removed, but you notice right here, there's a sudden leap in energy from the third energy level to the fourth. So it's going from, you know, roughly 600, 2,000, a little bit more than 2,000, then suddenly 11,000. So this is a pretty big leap all the way from 2,000 to 11,000. Now, why is the fourth ionization energy suddenly so much larger? Well, <clears throat> when aluminum loses three electrons, uh, it's going to have 10 electrons remaining. Neon, a group eight element, also has 10 electrons. And thus, after aluminum loses three electrons, it will have the octet configuration of neon. Having an octet makes the aluminum more resistant to change. Therefore, it's gonna take more energy to remove the fourth electron from aluminum. So here's the configuration of aluminum. And uh, if you remove three electrons, if you get rid of these three, these are the electrons remaining. And this configuration matches the configuration of neon. Notice that you have eight valence electrons, eight valence electrons. So if you were to remove a fourth electron from aluminum, you don't have an octet anymore. And uh, atoms don't like that. They want to keep their octet. So having an octet really stabilizes the atom. So you remove three electrons, now aluminum is stable, it's happy, and you're really gonna have to pull really hard to make it wanna give up that fourth electron. It's gonna say, no, you're gonna ruin my octet if you take that fourth electron. Okay, so to summarize, the factors affecting ionization energy include the radius. Uh, small radius means higher ionization energy. The octet rule, if it has an octet, ionization energy is gonna be elevated. If it has a filled sublevel, like the uh, S sublevels, each have, if it has two electrons, it's gonna elevate the ionization energy. If it has a half-filled sublevel, like nitrogen and group five elements does, that's gonna stabilize the atom, and that's gonna elevate the ionization energy. The atom's gonna be reluctant to get rid of that half-filled sublevel configuration. Okay. 
Now closely related to ionization energy is electron affinity. Uh, electron affinity is the attraction of an atom for an electron, and it's a measure of an atom's ability to acquire additional electrons. Like ionization energy, electron affinity increases with decreasing atomic radius. If you go from left to right across the chart, affinity increases. If you go up a column, affinity increases. Okay, so as you go from left to right, radius decreases, which causes the electron affinity to increase. Likewise, if you go up the chart, radius decreases, which increases the electron affinity. So like electronegativity, it's inversely related to the radius. And if you go from bottom left with the largest radius all the way up to the uh, upper right, smallest radius, electron affinity will increase. So electron affinity and the electron or ionization energy, um, they're pretty close. Now the deviation from uh, periodic trends match those we see for ionization energy. For example, if you look at the group two elements right here, um, these have negative electron affinities. And that's because they have a uh, filled sublevel. Um, so these guys are gonna be reluctant to uh, take electrons. And then if you look at the uh, group eight elements like uh, neon and argon, these also have negative electron affinities. And this is because they have an octet and they don't wish to acquire more electrons. And then finally, if you look at the, look at nitrogen. See, nitrogen has zero affinity. Well, why would nitrogen have zero affinity? Oh, remember nitrogen is a group five A element, which means it has a half filled P sub level and it reduces the likelihood of require, acquiring electrons. Phosphorus, now also in group five should have an affinity between that of uh, silicon and uh, sulfur. So it should have a value between 120 and 200. And instead it has an affinity of 74.3, which is lower than expected. And again, that's because of that half filled uh, orbital that stabilizes it. And there's something called electronegativity. And electronegativity is similar to electron affinity. Uh, electronegativity is the ability of an atom to draw electrons towards itself when electrons are shared between two atoms. And atoms sometimes fight each other for possession of electrons. Uh, the electronegativity uh, tells you the strength of the atom uh, in a tug of war over the electrons. Okay, so just to repeat, electronegativity tells you the strength of an atom in a tug of war over electrons. So, for example, when sodium and chlorine come together, uh, the chlorine will pull the electron from sodium towards itself because it has greater electronegativity. Okay, so here's a sodium atom with its electron, and here's a chlorine atom with its electron. And if you bring these two atoms together, um, the electrons will be in between them, and they're going to be fighting each other over a possession of these electrons. Well, chlorine has a greater electronegativity. Its strength is 3, <clears throat> and sodium's electronegativity uh, strength is 0.9, which is less than that of chlorine. So, since chlorine is stronger, the electrons move closer to the chlorine. Like affinity, electronegativity strength follows periodic trends. As the atomic radius decreases, electronegativity strength increases, and thus electronegativity increases from left to right across the chart, and also increases as you go up the chart. So for all these examples, the radius is inversely related to uh, the strength. So if you go from left to right, radius decreases, which means that it has a good ability to pull electrons towards itself. So electronegativity increases. If you go up the chart, radius decreases, but electronegativity increases. And again, if you go from bottom left to upper right, radius gets smaller, but electronegativity increases. <clears throat> now here's another chart showing some electronegativity values. If you look down here, uh, rubidium at the lower left has the lowest value at 0 0.8, while fluorine at the upper right has the highest value of uh, 4. And notice again that there are no values listed for the group 8A elements. And remember that these elements have an octet, and they have no desire to pull uh, electrons towards itself. So for all the things that we've been going over, we've been going over uh, ionization energy and 
electron affinity and electronegativity. For all of these, these are all inversely related to the radius, all right? So as the radius goes down, each one of these go up, all right? For a PDF transcript of this lecture, go to www.richardlouis.com. This has been chemistry lecture number 33, ionization energy, electron affinity, and electronegativity.